In this video, we're going to look at my favorite options trading system. Unlike most YouTube trading videos, this won't be a video in which you will learn that you should buy when some moving average crosses a sacred price level and sell when RSI drops below 60, or some other nonsense. Instead, you will learn about an actual trading style that has been properly researched, backtested, and is used by giant institutional trading firms every day. In fact, just to give you an example, the second largest hedge fund, AQR Capital, with $70 billion in assets under management, says that historical analysis shows positive returns and a respectable Sharpe ratio over time. Moreover, the strategy has had low correlations to well-known return sources, suggesting that the strategy can be diversifying when added to a portfolio. And the world's largest asset management firm, with over 6 trillion, yes trillion with a T, US dollars in assets under management, has adopted this approach and says that with this strategy, investors have the potential to capture outsized returns over long horizons with smaller drawdowns. With that being said, let us start by looking at the idea behind this trading strategy. The vast majority of investors have most of their portfolio allocated to various long equity investments. These investments come with significant downside risks which investors obviously want to avoid or at least reduce as much as possible. One way to reduce downward risk is by buying volatility, which has a significant inverse correlation to most long equity positions. Buying volatility products can be thought of as buying insurance against market crashes or other significant down moves. Like most insurance products, these trading strategies tend to have a negative expected return. This means that the insurance often wasn't actually necessary. But like with other insurances, due to risk aversion, most people are okay with paying a premium since these products can reduce the max drawdown and volatility of your portfolio. To make this clear, let's look at a brief thought experiment. If these insurance-like products were not trading at a premium, there would be absolutely no incentive to sell them. A surplus of buyers compared to sellers would then lead to an increase in the price until they are trading at a sufficient enough premium for the seller. So it wouldn't make sense if they weren't trading at a premium. This chart compares the recent performance of an S&P 500 portfolio hedged with put options at an unprotected S&P 500 portfolio. As you can see, during this time frame the insured portfolio significantly underperformed the unprotected one. Due to this negative expected return of insurance buyers, the opposite trading strategy, namely selling the insurance, has a positive expected return. Instead of paying a premium for the insurance, you take the opposite trade and receive a premium for selling the insurance. In slightly more technical terms, this premium means that the implied volatility is higher than the actual realized volatility. Implied volatility can be thought of as the expected future volatility extracted from an option's price. When investors expect high upcoming volatility, they tend to buy more options, which pushes options prices up and thus implied volatility as well. But since implied volatility tends to overestimate actual volatility, options tend to be overpriced, which creates an attractive opportunity for option sellers. Especially shortly after financial crisis and crashes, investors put more weight on protecting their portfolio, which is a great time to sell overpriced insurance. But how do you actually sell the insurance? Effectively selling the insurance is the tricky part, and there is certainly more than one way to do this. But in this video, I will focus on an option selling approach, since in my opinion this is the best approach for retail traders. One of the main factors influencing options prices is implied volatility. Option buyers profit from increases in implied volatility, whereas option sellers profit from decreasing implied volatility. The sensitivity of an option price toward changes in IV is measured by the option Greek Vega. For example, a Vega of 3 would mean that a position would gain $3 for every 1% increase in implied volatility. As an insurance seller, we always want a negative Vega position so that we can profit from the volatility premium as well as decreasing IV. There are a multitude of option strategies that have negative Vega values. For instance, both short calls and short puts have negative Vegas, which makes selling puts or calls a viable strategy. It is important, however, to note that these strategies are also affected by changes in the underlying asset's price. So if the underlying security moves in the wrong direction, you could still lose money even if implied volatility moved favorably. 
This does not necessarily make selling puts or calls a bad strategy, but it does certainly cloud your volatility exposure. Directional exposure is measured by the option Greek delta, and one possible solution to this problem is to focus on delta neutral strategies. These are strategies that aren't directly affected by changes in the underlying securities price. Possible examples include strangles, straddles and iron condors. But since delta is dynamic, it changes together with the underlying price, which means that these strategies will also be affected by big enough price moves. The concrete implementation of a negative Vega strategy can be arbitrarily complex. But some of the easiest ways to gain negative volatility exposure is by selling put options or covered calls. Both of these strategies have limited risk and limited profit potential. Next up, let's take a look at the historical performance of this strategy. To do this, let's firstly analyze the spread between historical and implied volatility of the S&P 500 index. This chart plots both the realized and implied volatility of the S&P 500 index over the past 10 years. As you can see, the vast majority of the time, IV is greater than HV. This pattern tends to hold true for most timeframes that are looked at. To closer examine the difference, we can look at this second chart that plots the spread between historical and implied volatility. When the red graph is above zero, implied volatility overestimates historical volatility, and as you can see, this is the case most of the time. There are a few exceptions, however, the most noticeable being the big drop during the crash of March 2020. But apart from a few exceptions, this chart looks quite promising for volatility insurance sellers. In fact, a report from Cambridge Associates states that implied volatility has overestimated historical volatility almost 87% of the time from 1990 until March of 2011. Obviously, there are countless ways to implement a volatility selling trading system, which makes it hard to evaluate the performance of this strategy as a whole. But to give you an example of the performance of a few specific implementations, we can use some of CBOE's strategy benchmark indexes. More specifically, we will look at three different option selling strategies. Let's start with CBOE's put right index. This index tracks a theoretical portfolio that sells 30-day S&P 500 at-the-money put options against collateralized cash reserves. These put options profit from a drop in implied volatility as well as an increase in SPX's price. The next strategy is benchmarked by BXMD, which is CBO's S&P 500 30 Delta Buy Right Index. This index sells a 30 Delta covered call every month while simultaneously holding a long S&P 500 position. This is a very simple strategy that can be adopted by almost anyone. The payoff diagram of a covered call position looks like this. The x-axis represents the underlying price and the y-axis represents the P&L. As you can see, the profit potential of this strategy is limited to a certain amount. This is the case for all short option strategies. The asymmetrical payoff is another reason why it makes sense that options are trading at a premium. The last strategy we're going to look at is benchmarked by CBO's S&P 500 Covered Combo Index. This is more or less a combination of the past two indexes. This benchmark tracks a theoretical portfolio that sells S&P 500 strangles against cash reserves. One advantage of selling strangles is that they are delta neutral strategies, which means that they are less affected by changes in the underlying price. Now that you hopefully understand what these benchmark indexes track, let's look at their performance. This chart compares the past performance of these indexes and the S&P 500 over the past 20 years. During this time frame, all of them significantly outperformed the S&P 500 index. The best performing strategy here is the covered call portfolio, then the short put strategy, and finally the short strangle index. Note that, depending on the time frame you look at, the results might differ significantly. If we look at the standard deviation of the daily returns of these benchmarks during the same time frame, we see that all of them once again outperformed the S&P 500 index as their returns are less volatile over this time period. Hopefully, this gives you an impression of what selling volatility has to offer. With that being said, it is important to note that these were just a few examples of how you could implement an option selling strategy. There are countless other possible variations that might have much better or worse returns.
One possible variation that I briefly want to mention is to dynamically change your short Vega allocation depending on the current state of implied volatility. If, for instance, IV currently is relatively low, it might not be the best time to sell volatility. But if implied volatility and thus options prices are abnormally high, it might be a great time to sell insurance products at a juicy premium. Last but not least, let's sum up some of the most important points of this video. Firstly, volatility has a strong negative correlation to most equity portfolios, which means that long volatility strategies can be used as an insurance policy against market drops. These insurance products tend to trade at a premium, which creates an opportunity for sellers. One way to sell this volatility insurance is by selling options. There are many ways one could go about doing this. Examples include selling covered calls, puts, strangles or straddles. All of these strategies have their advantages and disadvantages. If the right implementation is chosen, it is certainly possible to trade a short volatility strategy with better returns and lower volatility than a comparable long equity strategy. Historically speaking, short volatility portfolios have had low correlation with more common equity portfolios, which makes this strategy great for diversification purposes. If you are considering adding a short volatility strategy to your portfolio, here are a few things you need to look out for. Firstly, selling options comes with significant risks including the potential to lose more than your initial investment. This means that risk management is essential. It is very important to keep position sizes small. It is possible to limit your risk by buying out of the money options as a protection against outsized moves in the wrong direction. But doing this also has its disadvantages. Secondly, it is very important to have a long-term approach when selling volatility. Just like with real insurance selling, the law of large numbers applies to selling volatility. No insurance firm would be opened if they only had two or three clients. The risk of doing this is way too high since the profits from one client would never cover the potential losses of another client. The risk to reward ratio for insurance sellers is very bad, but this is compensated by a high probability of profit. This probability of profit, however, can only be realized with a high enough number of occurrences. The same applies to selling options. You need a long-term perspective to reap the benefits of insurance selling. With that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about options, I highly recommend checking out my website. Furthermore, I highly recommend checking out some of the papers and sources that are used for this video. You can find a list of the sources in the description box below. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more content like this. Thanks for watching.